Almighty God, most gracious, most merciful. Dear members of the audience, I find no better greetings to greet you than the universal greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Which when translated means, may the peace and blessings of Almighty God be upon us all. We apologize for the delay in starting but there has been many requests to hold for certain groups of people who have already left and are about to arrive. But unfortunately, we cannot hold on any longer. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you one and all to this important discourse, and we trust that your participation tonight will be fruitful and rewarding. Before we go any further, we begin tonight's discourse with a recitation from the Holy Qur'an by an aged but beautiful reciter of the Qur'an, Sayyid Abdul Qadir, who was born in Syria but is presently resident in Cape Town. I call upon Brother Qadir to recite a few verses of the Qur'an. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف رحيم فإن تولوا فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله جزاك الله thank you for the benefit of those who are not of the Islamic faith a reciter is called a hafiz when he has committed to memory every, every verse of the Holy Qur'an. This practice by Muslims has resulted in the Qur'an maintaining its purity as revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, by Almighty God through the Archangel Jibrail. Muslims firmly believe that the Holy Qur'an is the final word of God Almighty. Brothers and sisters, let me make three preliminary remarks before I call upon our respected speaker. Tonight's address must be understood in its proper perspective. This is not a contest or a debate with Christianity but it is a sincere attempt to expose and restore to its glory 
a divinely ordained message for all mankind. One merely has to refer to the following verses of the Quran to understand the seriousness of the obligations and duty on each and every Muslim in this regard. The Quran says, and I can find no better authority than the Quran itself. Surah 41, verse 33. Who is better in speech than one who calls men to God, works righteousness and says, I am of those who bow in Islam. Another surah, surah 16, verse 125 of the Holy Quran. And invite all to the way of thy Lord, would wisdom and beautiful preaching and discuss with them in ways that are best and most gracious. For thy Lord knows best who have strayed from his path and who receive guidance. Secondly, brothers, the topic in discussion should enlighten us all on the respected, revered, and honorable position which Prophet Jesus the Arabic terminology, Nabi Isa alayhi salam, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, holds in the eyes of, his, of Islam and in the eyes of Muslims. The Quran confirms and explains the miracle which surrounds his birth, life, and his most noble ministry. The prophethood of Prophet Jesus, Nabi Isa alayhi salam, is the cornerstone of every Muslim's belief. The myth of a Muslim being anti-Christ should clearly fall away tonight. Finally, we are indeed fortunate to have with us as experienced and as knowledgeable a scholar as Mr. Didat to explore this vital aspect of our belief. Mr. Didat is a well-known personality not only locally but internationally. His early exchanges with preachers, preachers and priests from Adam's mission has turned him into a committed student, scholar and soldier of Islam. I have pleasure in calling upon Mr. Didat to address you whereafter you will be free to ask him any question pertinent to the topic. Jazakallah, Mr. Didat. Alhamdulillah wahda. Was salatu was salamu ala man la nabi ba'da. اللهم يا مفتي الأبواب ويا مسبب الأسباب ويا دليل الحائرين توكلت عليك يا رب العالمين وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, just about three months ago, to be exact, on the fifth of June, nineteen eighty-three. On SABC TV, at the end of a lively debate on Islam and Christianity, the chairman, Mr. Bill Chalmers, commented. He said, I think it can be said from this discussion that there is, at present, somewhat more accommodation on the Islamic side for the founder of Christianity, then on the Christian side for the founder of Islam. What the significance